Jessica from Under the Covers and this is my planner update, I guess midway through the year kind of update. So the last time that I did a planner update was my lineup for 2018 and I actually just had my ARC bound planner, I think. I haven't actually looked at my old video, but I think that's what I remember from it. And I'm just gonna give you an update. Um, don't get fooled by the cover. This is still my arc bound planner. So we'll get into what's going on here in a second. So if you're interested to see what I'm using right now, I'll walk you through it and do a little bit of a flip through. Just keep on watching. So first things, I just wanna tell you guys what I am using in terms of actual planner covers or systems. The thing that you're seeing on top here is a traveler's notebook and it's a pocket size traveler's notebook. This is a recent addition to my system. And and I will tell you why this happened in a little bit but um, this is a Webster's Pages traveler's notebook it was actually pretty inexpensive when I was looking for something to try out the pocket size I wasn't sure if that's what I wanted to do but I really have to say that I love it I especially love this um, traveler's notebook from Webster's Pages I will leave it linked down below I purchased this on Blitzy and like I said, I still have my arc bound notebook planner system in this um, cover. I just literally put it back in this cover. It was just in my Martha Stewart peach or persimmon kind of cover for a little while and then I had it with just the clear cover and just like a pretty picture on the inside which you guys have seen in previous planner videos so I am not going to go into too much detail on how I set that up but I wanted to put it back in sort of a more bound kind of contained system so I have some covers which are doki book covers and I'll show you this when I flip through that one but I'm going to show you guys the pocket first. Now I wanted to tell you guys how I got to the fact that I'm using a pocket size and the reason for that is a few months into the year I had a bit of a crisis with my planner piece and I didn't want to have everything in my arc bound system. Now you guys may remember I did a digital planning combined with regular planning video and I am still very much using my digital planning. I am using Asana. So Asana has basically become my life in the thing that really keeps everything in line, all my ideas organized, all my info dumping, everything, everything goes on there. So that has really taken a lot of the stress from me having to have a system that really houses all the information that I need. And what that has allowed me is to have more creative freedom with my planner and my planner systems. And the nice thing about that is that it's become a more enjoyable hobby because I don't feel so much pressure to make it remind me everything that my planner needs to remind me. So it just basically gives me the brief overview of what I need to see on a weekly basis or at a glance, but I know that everything that I need to remember is digitally saved in my Asana. I have access to it on the computer. I have access to it on my phone through the app. So that has taken all the stress away from planning for me and it's made paper planning so much more enjoyable. So now that being said, I had everything in one arc bound system, which I will leave a link down below to my original system for the year. And I had a bit of a crisis and I took everything out of that and I put everything in a traveler's notebook. Now, if you've seen any of my older videos, I used to have traveler's notebooks before and I loved my traveler's notebooks. And I think the issue when I was having my crisis was that there weren't enough pretty things in my arc bound like I didn't have a lot of pretty dividers and I think that's the big appeal of having a traveler's notebook is making all the pretty dashboards and putting die cuts and things like that and I didn't have that in my arc system so what happened was I ended up transferring everything that I had in my arc bound uh, notebook that you guys saw in my previous video this year into a traveler's notebook in like a May Designs kind of size. It's not quite an A5 traveler's notebook. I can't remember what size it is. So what I ended up doing was I purchased this beautiful Pelle Studio traveler's notebook and I filled this thing up. It's huge, right? It's nice and thick and this thing was chunky and I had all my inserts here, I had all my notebooks, basically everything you guys saw in the previous video of this year was in here 
and I just didn't want to use it. So I went back to bases, I put everything back in my arc bound system just the same way that it was set up at the beginning of the year and I was liking that but still something about having my weekly pages in there was not working for me and I will show you why that was bothering me because of how I set up the new arc bound system that I'm going to show you after. So I wanted to take all my personal stuff out of that system and this sort of came to mind. It still gives me everything that I was looking for in having a traveler's notebook, but it's a much better size for what I need to use a planner for nowadays. And it's also small enough that it's my on-the-go planner. So technically I'm just throwing this inside my purse. All my information is on here. So let's just dive in and see what's in here. It's not 100% set up the way I want it to, um, but it's pretty much. I may change like some dividers or add some die cuts. I have a few things ordered that I haven't gotten here. But the main idea, I think it's pretty much what I wanted and it's been working very well. So in here, I did stick a highlighter to have on the go with me. So I made all the dividers myself. I bought some paper packs when I place the order from Blitzy. I will try to leave links to those paper packs down below. I also use some die cuts and a couple of things that I had from my stash, which are really, really old. So I couldn't even tell you where I bought them from. Like, for example, all this stuff here. So I'm really sorry. I really don't know where those came from. They were just on my stash for years. One thing that I really like about this particular cover is the fact that while it's plat in the front, it has the flower on the inside and I think it's really, really pretty. And now in here I just have a couple of paper clips, there's a little unicorn and a love light bulb. So those are both paper clips that I've had on my stash for a really long time. I also don't remember where I got those from. If I can figure those out from my purchases on Etsy, I will try and leave links down below for them. So the first dashboard divider area that I have is my, I guess you could call it my future planning calendar. So it's basically an insert that has just monthly views for the whole year and it's academic. Um, so it actually starts in July, even though I started using this before that, but that's the printable that I purchased from Annie Plants. Again, the dashboard I did myself, the back of this is still part of the paper pack. Um, so in the paper pack, you also get a few cards and I trimmed that down to size and I put that in the back of the dashboard. And I have some acetate. This is all old stuff that I had in my stash. The acetates that you're seeing throughout here are actually from scrapbook.com. So now while I said that I purchased the insert from Annie Plans Printables, I did design the cover myself in Photoshop. So basically this is a 2018-2019 month at a glance calendar. And like I said, I only have it for future planning. I decorated a little bit on this first month, but then I decided just not to go so crazy and just put down the information that I needed. So that's the basic view here. And I actually figured out a pretty easy way to print these myself. Um, so I redid the files that I got from Annie Plans Printable so that I could print them actually using the half letter sheets that I already have. So I think I've mentioned before that for my arc bound planner, I found on Amazon these reams of paper that are half letter size. So they're 5.5 by 8.5. And that is actually so perfect for this. So I was able to rework the files from Annie Plans Printables so that I could literally just print them so that I can just trim off a little bit on the sides and I don't have to trim from the height of the insert so it was actually pretty simple to get these printed and done. One thing that I will say is all the inserts I didn't bother stapling them or sewing them or anything so they're all loose inserts in here for right now. I'm not sure if I'm going to change that or if I'm just going to keep it like that. They're being held in here pretty well so I don't know that I really care too much. Um, so for right now, they're fine like that. So that's that insert, the back of the acetate and the back of that dashboard, which I also put a card here. And 
again this is all part of that scrapbook paper pack and this little picture frame is from my stash I had this from my stash from uh, my project life stuff so I can't I can't remember where this came from um, obviously the idea is I'm gonna stick a picture in here but I wanted to film this before I added any kind of pictures so I didn't put one in there yet and I didn't want to um, laminate the picture that way I can just change it when I want so I'll probably just add the picture to this area and just put some washi tape to hold it in place and whenever I want to change it I can just easily change it so now the next divider or the next elastic let's say holds my weekly planning so this is the part that was in my arc bound system that I really didn't want to have there and this is the main reason why I wanted to try out this system this small system Again, this dashboard, did it myself. The polar bear is part of my really old stash. I can't remember where it came from. Same with all this stuff here. Um, the acetate is from scrapbook.com. The cover for this, I designed myself as well. The insert that I'm using for this, uh, for like the month insert and like for the weekly, the weekly stuff, I will leave it linked down below it is a printable that I purchased and I know that the name of the Etsy shop has something to do with pineapple I can't remember right now I'm really sorry I can't remember the name but I will leave it linked down below I really really like this um, uh, weekly layout for these inserts so I am continuing for July and I'll show you my July which is already ready Again with this one, it's not something that I um, staple, so the insert is loose in here. But I'm just going to give you a little quick flip through. I did the cover myself, so that I did replace from what came in the insert. And it has a whole year here, which I really like. I just highlighted the fact that this is for June. And then you get decorate, a decorate page to start the month. I just did a couple of important reminders on here. Then you have the month at a glance and this was especially helpful for me because if you noticed my future planning insert didn't have a June calendar so I was able to use that here. I did decorate a little bit on here but I didn't go too too crazy. I just basically want to have a month at a glance to see like the big events or big things that I need to remember. If there's anything in terms of like big bills, I put it on here, but because of Asana, uh, all my little bills are not on here. So I have all my bills, my regular monthly bills and whatever. I have all of those set up as a project in Asana and they are recurring tasks. So every month they automatically repopulate. So I don't really have a need to include that in my planning, paper planning system, but I do keep like important things like I had corporate taxes and stuff like that. Other than that, I do like to keep track of any kind of appointments, uh, nails, doctors, whatever, special dates, birthdays, anniversaries, any kind of travel, family going away, family coming in. That kind of stuff does get recorded here and it does help me when I am trying to figure out what I need to do the week after. So that's basically how I use my monthly calendar. And that is something that I will continue just using the monthly on here as opposed to the monthly in this section. So the monthly in this section serves more as a future planning um, information. So from here, it gets recorded on here and then goes on the weekly. But during the month, this is where I refer to for information and say I schedule an appointment or I have something to write down for a future month, then that's where it comes and goes in here. I hope that made sense. So I'm still using my page markers from my Paper Love Studio. I really love these things. These go almost to every single planner system that I ever use. So I have the month marked on here and then I basically have the weekly layout. Again, I'm really sorry I don't know the name of the shop, but this insert is basically a week on four pages. So in here there's a space for weekly focus. There's a list for things that you may need to do specific days for the week so you have two lines per each day and then you have a column which is Erin Condren sticker friendly size which I really like because a lot of my stickers are that size so I can still reuse a lot of decoration from what I have in my stash as opposed to having to adapt to it something else and basically let's try to give you guys a little bit of a flip through here a lot of what I was using in terms of stickers when I was trying out this pocket size was just like leftover stuff. That's why a lot of this decoration looks 
a little weird, but I really enjoyed using this system. And as you can see, it's pretty much all filled out. I'm really not using these two note pages in the back for anything. I guess what I was thinking is I'll probably maybe do some kind of memory keeping in the back. So if there's anything that I want to record at the end of the month before I put this away, that's probably where it's going to go. But I am not using this for like no random notes or anything like that because I have a separate insert in here for that kind of stuff. So now because I am recording this at the end of June, I'm actually ready to switch out this insert and put my July insert. So again, this is not sewn or stapled or anything like that. I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to do the storage of these, but obviously these are pretty simple to store. I'll probably just stick them in an envelope or something like that for right now. But um, I'm not too concerned with the fact that they're not stapled. I think they'll be all right. So this one comes out. And like I said, I printed July early. So July has actually been sitting at the back of this planner for quite some time. So here's my July, which is ready to go. I did the cover. Now I haven't really written anything in here. I just decorated a little bit um, on Photoshop here. I marked out, already highlighted the fact that this is the July insert. I did put a couple of stickers on here, mainly just so that I know where I need to start certain things. And I did get this one week decorated, so it's ready to go for the first week of July. But basically this is what the insert looks like without anything on it. Like I said, it has a grid here for weekly focus. It has, the days of the week here, which can, this section can be used for a lot of different things. So I haven't figured out what I want to use it for. So it kind of stays empty. I actually covered it up for this week. And then you have a column for each day. I think that this is actually the perfect amount of space now that I have a lot of my information in Asana. So I basically look at my Asana tasks and at my Asana calendar all the time. I don't really look so much at my daily tasks on here, but I do like to sit down at the end of the week and figure out what my week is going to look like um, for the upcoming week. And that's when I sit down and decorate and prepare for the week that's coming and I can see what what things I need to get done what big items need to get done who's got a birthday where I need to buy a present for somebody where I need to be where I have an appointment and then I can also look at my list of tasks in Asana and try to figure out where I need to organize them and where I have time to get them done so basically this is my insert for the whole month which is ready to go for July and I'm just gonna slide it in here so it's now ready for the new month. So that's the back of the acetate and the back of this dashboard that I had done. Again, the card came with the scrapbook paper pack, which I will leave linked down below from Litzy, but all the little die cuts, I can't remember. They were from my stash and they're pretty old. So now the next section is kind of something that I'm using some of it because of the fact that this is also my on the go. So in here I have a folder and this folder came, this is actually a two folder setup. So these two folders are attached and I just slipped them through here. So in this first folder is just for like receipts or loose paper, instead of just going randomly in my purse, this is where it comes. This actually is just something that I took from something I wanna buy another one. I guess you could call this kind of like a catch-all folder for, paper, for loose papers in my purse. And I also put in here a little card sleeve with some extra cards and things that I don't really need to have in my wallet because I don't want my wallet to be so bulky but this is where they end up so like medical cards, discount cards, business cards, that kind of stuff. I had all of those in my passport traveler's notebook which was one of the first traveler's notebooks that I actually purchased and used and I used that as a wallet for quite some time so those are really just old inserts that I stuck in here. The next thing is actually, I really, really love this. This was a digital vellum download from Etsy. I will leave this link down below. It's so cute. It's unicorns and I just printed this myself on vellum at home. 
And then the next thing is actually my, kind of my scrap notebook insert. And this is just random note stuff in here. I have work notes, I have just random blog notes, I have whatever. And then there's the back of that pretty vellum, the back of the extra cards, and that second folder. Now in this second folder, I have post-it notes, a few stickers, things like that. I don't foresee having to use this a whole lot. And then the last thing on here is what I am calling an insert that I want to maybe keep. Um, so again, dashboard from paper that I got from those packs and I put another piece of that pretty vellum on here so the first thing that I have on here is my general like reading list and I do make notes on here as to what books um, I've reviewed and that kind of stuff so this is just like a running list it does help me when I film my videos now what I want to continue doing and I haven't played around with it yet but I am considering doing daily pages and if I do venture into doing daily pages this is where they're gonna go and if that's the case then this could be an insert that I end up keeping along with like the weekly that I showed you guys not sure about that yet but it's something that I'm playing around with and see if I actually get it done for right now though this is all that it's housing it's just a random place for me to jot down all my reading notes for making my videos a little bit easier when I do my wrap-ups and then again just the back of that vellum and the back of that dashboard um, I just put a couple of die cuts on the back I have some page flags in here as well and my pen and that's it so this one actually stays with me it's an on-the-go planner and it basically houses like personal stuff so now back to my arc bound planner if you watched my previous video you know that that was housing everything and what I ended up deciding was that I wanted this notebook to be my blog planner so everything that has to do with the blog and with my personal life is in Asana but there are still things that I like to keep track of on paper or that it makes it easier for me to see things on paper even though I have all of this information stored there but for me it's not as easy to like see it laid out when it's in that digital format for certain things or like subtasks or things like that or future subtasks so I created this with all new inserts for the most part but I am still using the main core system of my arc bound that you guys saw in my previous video so this is literally just a cover from Doki book that the clear um, notebook just slides in. When I started using arc bound systems I actually purchased a ton of doki book covers so I have them in pretty much every color and sometimes I use them sometimes I don't. I like to have the variety because sometimes I'm in the mood for having something that looks a little bit more put together like a planner and sometimes I just want something that looks like a notebook that I can fold over. Um, most of the times that's actually what I use is something that's just literally this and I can fold it over and use it. So in here I just have a cute paper clip. I have have a um, die cut I have some post-its more post-its in here and then in here I have some page flags in case I need them so nothing too crazy I am using the same uh, I think this was a Levenger clear front and back cover it's the same one that I've used in previous setups the one where I did a video of a DIY planner that's actually the same cover that I was using then a lot of the system in this is actually that same idea so for the cover of this um, this is actually all digital prints that I purchased I will try and leave links down below to like the background that I use and the image that I use for this I can't remember the names of the shops where I got them from but I basically designed this cover set up on Photoshop I printed it on regular paper and I just glued it down on black cardstock and I hole punched it that's as complicated as this cover got and it looks really cute it looks cute when I have it in here and it's also functional if I want to have the notebook outside of this so in the back of that I put a scrapbook paper I put a picture and some decorative bits so next I have a piece of acetate and I think this was actually also in my old setup I'm not sure but it's just a, some pretty acetate that I think I picked up at Michael's but I'm, I don't remember right now um, and sorry I had to 
block out my information because I totally forgot that that was there, but this is still the same beginning part of the planner, same as it was in my original setup. So all of this, you guys already saw the year at a glance. Now for the tabs, I actually had these done. I think it was from Planet by Char or Planet Char or something like that. I will also leave links down below to that. So in this first tab, because this is a blog planner, I put the editorial calendar, which is a month at a glance basically. Pretty much each section has vellum to start it with what the section is. And the vellum that I printed on here is from L2 Studio. This is the 2018 editorial calendar. And again, it's just a plain month at a glance. This is the same insert that I was using before. This is actually an insert I designed myself. So for example, this month I had printed it nice and plain and I just put some washi tape and things like that. This one I actually had designed it on the computer and then I printed it, but I ended up getting lazy and I didn't want to do this for every single month. So that's not what happened. Now I also like putting a sticky on the calendar when I'm planning things ahead. That way I know if I've emailed somebody for information or I've offered a date to somebody. All of that kind of pending stuff doesn't go on my digital planning so I like to be able to have it somewhere and being on a sticky actually helps me for that. So that's 2018. It's just monthly calendars on here. So that's the editorial calendar part. This is a piece of acetate that I think also came from Michael's. And again, the divider from Planet Char. That's what I'm calling it. I hope that that's the case. So the next section, I actually have it as sort of my reading journal. And we'll talk about my reading journal at the end of this planner flip through because uh, if you guys have seen my reading journal setups or videos, I was using for a few years a whole notebook just for that. And Obviously it was a lot more elaborate, I was printing the covers, and I really liked it. I stuck to that for years, like I said. And when this year started, I really didn't feel like doing all of that. And basically I was using these really nice inserts from Annie Plans Printables. So I basically have every book that I read, the date that I started and finished, the rating, and just book title and author name. And I am doing one of these like bookshelves per month. So there's February, March, April, May, June. So June I actually didn't finish filling it out. I, I'm a little behind. I stopped at 619. But I try to already have most of what I'll need for the year printed on here. And I really like this format. I will continue filling this out. So this is not going to go away. So once we finish with that, I added another vellum here for my yearly challenges. And I just created this little insert. I think it was already in the previous setup video. Um, this is for the roundabout challenge. And I'm just highlighting books as I read them. So basically, I need to read three in each category. But I gave myself five choices and some I'm terribly failing. Now, this is just because I wanna to stick to the list. Obviously, I have read historical romances, but I haven't read any of the five that I mentioned in my original list. So I will try to at least read three from my original list. And again, at the end of that, I have another piece of acetate. My next divider is for weekly posts. And again, printed a piece of vellum here with Alto Studio um, vellum design. This is also an insert from Annie Plans Printables. This has actually been surprisingly working really well for me to lay out the stuff that I need to do for the weekly posts for the blog. So basically it's a week on two pages insert from Annie Plans Printables. It's undated and it's a grid. So that really helps me, for example, when I sit down on a Friday usually and I look at the week ahead. So on here I have obviously June stuff. I started with July stuff. I also printed August and September. 
so I actually need to start working on so that's basically what this editorial calendar section is on my next tab I actually have some collections and this is not necessarily only blog collections so this is where it starts becoming a little bit of a mix of regular planner stuff and blog planner stuff but anyway um, the first page is just a list of um, Kindle email addresses then the next thing that I put in here are also inserts from any plans printables and it's just a list of movies and TV shows like tracking of series and seasons and things like that that I've watched so the first part is the movies and the cover is from Annie Plans Printables but I did print my own in the back of that so this is something that I designed myself. I think I have this on my shop for, for sale as a printable but I'm not sure if it's not on there I'll try to get it up on there. I really love this. I actually was using this already in the Traveler's Notebook so I just need to transfer over information on here so that's why the movie section looks a little sparse. And then I have the TV section which this is fully like Annie Plans Printables how she sells it the cover and then the shows. So the first page on here is my Arrow binge of all six seasons. And as of right now, that's the only collections that I've put on here. There are a couple other things that I want to add, but so far that's all I've managed to add on here. The next tab is basically the notes or scrap notes, pages, ideas, whatever. Um, again, this is a vellum with Alto Studio um, vellum printed on it. And again this is just like random notes that I may use when I'm planning stuff out the paper from here is just from the Martha Stewart planner that I had already um, purchased so I just stuck it on here I didn't print it or anything like that and this is actually a divider that I had in my old arc bound notebook so I just stuck it in the back of this to separate some of the weekly notepad pages that I have. This is actually a notepad. Let me show you. This is a notepad. This is an A5 weekly plan notepad from Hello Petite Paper, I think if I'm not mistaken. And basically what I did is I just grabbed a couple of pages from here. I hole punched them. And this is sort of the scrap um, paper that I use when I'm planning out the week. So before I get my plan done uh, in my traveler's notebook I just lay it out on here at least the big events or things that I need to make sure that I want to include in my layout and then I just usually just throw it out I have a couple stuck in here so now we get to the end of this flip through here I have a pocket one of the clear pockets I got this from Staples it's nice and sturdy in the back and it's a little bit softer in the front but it's very good quality and nothing's gonna come out of here I have some washi on here I did stick one last divider on here and mainly because I'm not sure if I want to use a divider for this right now it's sort of like up in the air what I want to do with it but you know when I was talking about my reading journal so this is a work in progress this is something that I I'm probably going to go back to and if you I'll leave a link to my last reading journal video so basically what I want to do is go back to doing that uh, it's a little bit more work because I have to print the covers I have to put a little bit of decoration not too much but a little bit of decoration but I actually really did enjoy doing it and I kind of miss it and I did it for years like I said so I want to go back to doing it I basically just stuck the, a plain notebook in here because I want to make sure that it's not a whole big planner that's like a separate thing so I just stuck it on here and I haven't done anything with it so it's just a plain dot grid made design notebook nothing on here nothing to see um, so this is a work in progress. I don't know if it's gonna stay on here. I don't know if I'm gonna move it into like its own little traveler's notebook like I had it before. I kinda don't want it to be so bulky. So 
I'll probably update you guys in my next planner video as to what's going on with this but I do miss doing it. I do miss seeing the covers all nice and laid out. Um, like I said, I am using the other reading journal where I just list titles and ratings and that's fine in case Goodreads ever goes down because that's where all my information is, but I kind of miss seeing something a little bit prettier. So I'm gonna play around with this and see what happens. The only other thing I keep back here, and in here I do have some important like financial numbers in case I need to pay some bills and I don't have my wallet with me, I kind of have like important information on here. Now this never leaves my house, so it's not like I'm going to lose it or anything like that. So that's why I feel like it's safe to have that kind of information written down. Um, I do live in a house that's three floors, so it's not a good thing when you need to pay a bill and your wallet's on the first floor and you're on the third floor. So that's why this is here. So that's the last thing on this planner like I said it just slides in back here there is space here on this doki book disc agenda if you were to put like a notepad or anything like that I don't use it this is more than plenty for what I'm using this for I also have my pretty pen gem for this on here and that's basically it it's kind of simple I'm basically just using these two things it's everything that I need to keep me organized there's enough decorating and enough pretty things and dashboards to keep my crafty self happy but without overwhelming me and it's also with the help of having the digital stuff it's really alleviated the pressure of having to have like planner piece in terms of actually having to remember things so that's the biggest thing that I would struggle with and now I just need to struggle with what I like in terms of things that look pretty so it is functional to me in the sense of there are things that I need to see laid out on paper like the monthly calendar or a week at a glance at least once a week I need to look at a week at a glance and see what I need to do um, and when I look at it in a digital format it doesn't really cement itself I guess so it does help to have it on paper and that works the same for my personal week at a glance and my blog week at a glance I do both I do the blog usually on a Friday I do the personal usually on like a sun Saturday or Sunday and at least it helps me work towards what I need to set up my next week at so I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you have any questions I hope that I was able to explain everything pretty good um, like I said everything else is on my digital and I do plan on doing a video of my digital organization and at least show you guys some apps that I use to stay organized and give you guys a glimpse into how I have my Asana organized both uh, what you can see on the app and the actual layout on the computer so stay tuned for that video it'll be coming up hopefully soon I am working on setting that up if you have any questions that you would like me to address in that video just leave them in the comments down below as well happy planning guys and we'll see you again in the next video bye bye